Hello. In this video, we are going to look at graphs of one dimensional block functions when we have a repeating lattice. Suppose that our lattice has a periodic potential u of r, and it's periodic with period a. So that means that u of r is equal to u of r plus a. According to Bloch's theorem, the eigenfunctions for such a system um, will consist of the set of e to the i k r times this u of r. Now, for this particular uh, video, to plot these functions in the real plane, so they can be complex, we are just going to look at the real part of the wave function, which boils down to us being then being that psi of x is going to be cosine of x times these periodic potentials u of x. And in this video, the two uh, repeating potentials we're going to use are going to be 1s and 2px type orbitals. Here is a sketch of our repeating lattice. We have eight atoms. The atoms happen to be at the positions minus seven, minus five, minus three, minus one, one, three, five, and seven angstroms. So our interatomic distance here, our lattice distance, A is two angstroms. When k is equal to zero, here is what the linear combination of 1s orbitals looks like on our repeating lattice. And at the bottom, uh, along the x-axis, you see a series of circles, which we can interpret as the phases of the 1s orbitals. When k is equal to zero, they are all in the same phase, because they're all shown as being uh, clear here. Now for k is equal to one, we notice now we have a more complicated uh, molecular orbital. And we notice that if we interpret the phases that the left two and the right two most um, atoms have their 1s orbitals in the negative phase, whereas the other four have a positive phase. Here for the same setup, now for k is equal to two, now we see that we have a situation where we have um, the second, third, sixth, and seventh atoms have a negative phase, so they're shown in dark gray. And the other four atoms, uh, their 1s orbitals have a positive phase. Remember, if we have the same phase next to each other, we have a bonding interaction. If we have opposite phases, we have an antibonding interaction. Here we have the molecular orbital for when k is equal to four. And we notice that the resulting wave function, it oscillates back and forth between uh, positive and negative values. So this is consistent with a situation where we have um, the first, third, fifth, and seventh atoms with the negative phase and the remaining atoms with a positive phase. So all the nearest neighbor interactions here are all antibonding. So when k is equal to four, we have the all antibonding combination if we're dealing with one s orbital. Now here for comparison, we show what the uh, linear combination of atomic orbitals would be for each of these different k values. So we notice that k is equal to zero is all bonding, so that's gonna be the lowest in energy. K is equal to four is all antibonding, so it's highest in energy. And then we can see based upon the greater the number of nodes, the greater the kinetic energy, that as we increase the value of K, the energy increases as well, at least if we're dealing with one uh, S orbitals on all of the atoms.
the second and final atomic type that we're going to look at are 2px orbitals. So they're um, extend along the x-axis here. And now we look at the situation when k is equal to zero. We are looking for the block functions. And we notice here we have that, again, that very rapid oscillation between negative and positive uh, values for the wave function. And we know that this is consistent with the situation where we have the uh, p orbitals all arranged in such a way as all the interactions are going to be antibonding when k is equal to zero. So here is k is equal to one. And then we show the approximate shading of the phases of the 2px orbitals and their uh, orientations that would result in the molecular orbital that we see for k is equal to one when our atomic orbitals involved are 2px. Here we have the molecular orbital for the case where k is equal to two and we're using the 2px atomic orbital type to make our molecular orbital. Here we have the situation when k is equal to four. So the 2p orbitals have the difference in that they have two phases, whereas a 1s, 2s, 3s orbital only has the one phase. So we can have nodes that arrive from, arise from the 2px orbitals from the mere fact that the two lobes of the 2p orbital have different phases, and we can also get nodes from having antibonding combinations with the neighbors. And we would notice here that at least as far as neighboring 2p orbitals go, that when k is equal to four, we have the maximum number of bonding combinations so that at least between different 2px orbitals, all the combinations here are fully bonded. Now here we do the same thing. We look at uh, four different K values for the uh, molecular orbitals, but here we're doing it with the two PXs instead of the one S's or two S's, for example. And we notice here that K is equal to zero since it's the all anti-bonding combination is actually highest in energy. And then as we go up to K is equal to four, K is equal to four has the, uh, is all bonding. So therefore, it's going to be the lowest energy uh, molecular orbital. So the point we're making here is that when we have bands that involve s orbitals, that as k increases, the energy of the orbital is going to increase. But if we're dealing with 2px orbitals, then as the k value increases, the energy is going to decrease. So we say that the bands... Uh, they run up for s orbitals, and we say the bands run down, they get lower in energy as k gets bigger for the 2px orbital. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay warm, and as always, have a good one.